dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning hey george hey lions how's it going dude i'm tired we we spent the last four years of the podcast playing the first 2015 dooms so that we can Mm -hmm. now play doom 2016 and, and I'm, <laughs> it was a marathon, but we got there. It was, man. It, it took a lot of time, energy, and effort. I think both of our wives left us. Um, you know, like kids are grown. Ch- yeah, <laughs> cats in the cradle. But I mean, worth it for for our fans. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we, we we started this joke at you know Doom Two, and we said yep. we were going to do this, and and now we've come full circle. Exactly, and and I think that you know. W- our fans appreciate the fact that we are willing to throw our lives away playing uh, 2,015 iterations of a game, but not spend a moment doing research. No. Not, yeah. not a second. Nope. Um, this game came out uh, on May 13th, 2016, uh, and what will be the first of many side stories, um, when I was looking up the release date, um, I my eyes just scrolled to the little you know block on the wikipedia page and it said 2017 and i was like what and that's <laughs> <laughs> so that's when it was really reported to the switch but mm. so doom 2016 did in fact come out in 2016 but in 2017 yeah. it was ported to the switch but i i almost had like an existential meltdown <laughs> like there's 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 no way there's no way it can't be man it can't be no. yeah no um so new nostalgia experience right yes so my, I, I've got a brief nostalgia experience and then I've got like three quick side stories. I want to, <laughs> I have a section, I have a section for it. So I just figured this is the best time to do it. So uh, my nostalgia experience for this was, I think I downloaded it around when it came out. Um, and, and I was like, this game is awesome. It is a return to form. And then I said, we should play this on the podcast for, for the podcast. And you said, no, it's not a nostalgia game. It's uh, it's it's nostalgia like adjacent, and I and then and then I spent the next I think three years diligently trying to set precedent so that way we could play this game and and if it, like making sure that we played the original, setting a different game that was a return to form that didn't have pixel art, and it was it's been a journey, man. But I, again, <laughs> worth it. Yeah, no, I I appreciate your your dedication because whether or not the game was good, just the fact that you were willing to play the long game is is valuable <laughs> in and of itself. Things that were a just a blast while I was playing. Um, one of them is that you know my wife was listening to me play this, and uh, and so a lot of times she wasn't watching because uh, it, it would sometimes make her nauseous to watch. Um, so uh, so she would just hear what I was saying. And one of the sound clips that she got was like, oh, hell yeah. What now? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why was because I had just blown apart three demons and all of a sudden turned to my left and there was like a giant, you know, plasma demon, you know, right next to me that I just had lost track of. And, and he had like blasted me to, you know, 10 health left. So I had to, you know, run away and, and, and quickly re- regroup and recover. So I just I just like that the game can turn on you so quickly that you can g- hit that dizzying high and then cataclysmic low so quickly. Um, I also I a lot the, of those moments, a lot of like, I yes. am in charge. I am not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, too, uh, the first time the Revenant showed up, which is the one with the rockets on their shoulders. How did he become like the mascot? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I it's know, cool. but I will tell you, just, but yeah. I just wonder, like, why him? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, w- I will tell you, though, that because he is the mascot, um, at one point, Teddy came out and we switched from Doom to Minecraft. So he just saw the mascot. <laughs> and then, like, two weeks later, he said, Dad, I want to play a new game. And I said, which game? He said, the one, the one with the eyes. And I was like, what? And he's like, the one with the face and the eyes. And I said, wait, 
do you mean doom? And he was like, I, he, it's the face with the eyes. And I was like, we're not playing doom, man. Like, <laughs> I don't care how adorable it is that your brain didn't even understand what it was seeing. We are not playing yeah. doom. No. Um, so yeah. So anyways, the first time he shows up, right. Um, I had just gotten my rocket launcher. And so he showed up and fired some rockets. And I said, oh, oh no, are we doing rockets? Sounds good. And then immediately, and I exclusively killed them with rockets because I had to prove that I was better with rockets than they were. Oh, oh, I can also rockets. Do you want to see me yes. rockets? I can rockets. It's, Let's rockets. I just, I'm sorry. I was double checking my clock and it is apparently rockets o'clock. So here we go. Uh, and then the other one, which is... <laughs> Is not exclusive to this one, this game, but this game does it so perfectly, which is the emotional roller coaster of like you're 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 running down a hallway, man. You just killed some demons. You're like you're gonna go kill some more demons. And you're like, oh yeah, good, some armor, man. I need some armor. Oh yeah, and some health and some ammo. Oh crap, you know, <laughs> just that realization when all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm maxed out on everything. Oh no, but it, what's especially in like especially the before second you fight- to last level. They do that in between like every fight. And it's just yes. like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Especially when you fight the cyber demon in particular, because there's a whole bunch of guns and ammunition and stuff. And then a giant 10 foot, you know, 50 foot tall door opens to another giant 50 foot tall door. And I just turned to Megan, like, you see, see crap like this? No good. It's not what you want. <laughs> But you are the Doom Slayer. I, I am being filled with dread right now. They know exactly what they're doing. It's 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 the sign of a good dungeon master where you're like, man, if only I had more health and ammo, I'd be able to do this. Like, oh, here's all of the health and ammo in the world. Why? Why <laughs> why are you why are you giving me all the health and ammo in the world? I just I look, man, I just want to make sure that I know that you're at full health and full ammo. That's all I, I just need to know Here, that. Here's your sense, you being Goku. Um <laughs> So my nostalgia experience is uh, got a lot of overlap with yours since yours involved you like slowly prodding at me over multiple years. Um, th- there's a couple different uh, like side things that were happening, which is um, I don't consider myself an FPS player. Like I've played many FPSs and I tend to enjoy them, but I just like I don't seek out this genre generally. Um mm-hmm. When Doom 3 came out, we were in college and I played a lot of Doom and Doom 2 as a youngin. And when Doom 3 came out, I remember even just from like the initial promos being like, this is not for me because this is not a game (laughs) that's about I am the Doom Slayer. You're not, you know, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me sort of thing. Like Doom 3 is scary, or at least that's how they were marketing it. And so I just, I didn't even... Mm -hmm. Didn't even look twice at it. I was just like, nope, I don't want to play a scary, you have to hold up a flashlight game. That's not, to me, that's Resident Evil, which I also bailed on because I I don't like crap jumping out at me. So when this game came out. Resident Evil became Doom. Yes. And Doom became Resident Evil. Like they they passed in the night. And then around the same time, they both did their hard resets. Yeah. And got back in their corners. Both realized they'd made a mistake and (laughs) right right in course. They, they were both like, like, wait, isn't this, isn't this your, your side? Like, I, I feel like I'm wearing your clothes and you're wearing my clothes, you know? Yeah. We can't go out there in the same dress. Um, <laughs> so when this, when this game came out, I was kind of just like, oh, look, they made more doom. Right. And it's all visually very scary. And then the more you talked about it and the more I saw about it, I was like, oh, this is, this is more like what I think of as doom, right? This is doom too, but with like really high production values, right? This is, this mm-hmm. is doom too. If you know, doom's dad was a trust funder, right? Like, and, <laughs> and that's all fine. But when I actually sat down to play the game, I had a realization and I'm I'm not trying to, to unnecessarily clickbait this, this podcast, but I, I really do believe this. So I'm, I'm going to say this up front, this game more than any other nostalgia game we've played knows that it's a nostalgia game. And really, really wants you to be in on the joke. Now, whether or not that's required, whether or not the game stands on its own merits, like that's what the rest of the podcast is going to be about. But I do think it's interesting that like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze does not demand that you played all the previous Donkey Kong countries, right? Undertale does not demand that you played Earthbound. 
But this game is littered with references to the early Dooms, up to and including entire pixel art maps that look like the original game that you can unlock, right? There's just nods to the old games, just left, right, and center. And I just thought that was interesting because I was like, oh, this game isn't made for, like, teenagers and like bringing new people to the series this game is made for people in their 30s and 40s who were teenagers when doom came out i was like that's fascinating because that makes it a little bit harder for us to like walk like the true (laughs) the the lawful good path of the critic because this game was designed for us like this game was designed for you know kids who grew up playing doom and doom 2 and are now in their 30s and 40s and are like man i miss that feeling and they were like good news right so yeah you know like like i said whether or not it stands up on its own merits we will now get to but i just thought it was interesting that more than and i actually looked back through the other nostalgia games we played and this one leans on that that particular button the hardest no question um before we actually answer the question i lied we're gonna shill first uh so Mm -hmm. if you didn't know you could like support us by going on to Apple podcasts and leaving ratings and reviews. You could tell your friends and family that they should listen to us talk about doom and also other games. Probably uh, we're both on Twitter. You can find links for all this crap in the show notes. You can request games by going to the the website and filling out the little feedback form or complaining at us on Twitter. There's all kinds of cool things you could do. And if you want to just like give us money, cause you know, that helps keep the lights on. It helps keep not the flashlight because this isn't that doom this is like everything's just well lit all the time yeah but we need money all the time yeah sometimes in hellfire but yeah but but we need money to pay for that hellfire um and if you want to if you want to give us some of that money you could support us on patreon and everyone who supports us on patreon gets access to the after show uh so there's special additional content that only patrons get and you can get it and if you support us at the 8-bit classic or 16-bit hero level uh, we will shout you out on the show. So we want to thank our 8-Bit Classics, John. Wielder of the Heavy Assault Rifle. Kevin. Keeper of the Minigun. And Yarno. Firer of the Plasma Rifle. And our 16-Bit Heroes, Michael. Ripper of the Chainsaw. David. User of the BFG-9000. And Jacob wielder of the standard shotgun because that was my bread and butter for this game <laughs> you'd think it you'd think that the, the 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 last person would be the bfg right because like what what could be better than that but it's the standard shotgun i use that standard shotgun day in and day out i went to sleep with it there were many other shotguns like it but that one was mine dude you, you know the <laughs> the meme of like the guy walking down the street and he's with his girlfriend and he like looks back at the the attractive girl <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm the guy, the girlfriend is the standard shotgun, and the attractive girl <laughs> is the super shotgun. Because oh yeah, the second I got the super shotgun, the standard shotgun wasn't just dead to me. I actually swore under my breath if I accidentally switched to it. <laughs> <laughs> I I became nah, a super shotgun acolyte. Like I I the I used to me the and we're definitely straying into mechanics, we'll bring it back here in a second. <laughs> To me, I would use the super shotgun if I got the quad damage. Like that was the ideal pairing for that thing because it was just that's hot. Yeah, I just get up in everyone's face and just blow them to pieces. Right? Um, no, I, I because I use the standard shotgun with the explosive shell. And the cool thing is that if you get the mastery of that, then when you direct hit somebody with the explosive shell, which I was pretty good at doing, it fired smaller shells around it. So it actually fired like a mini grenade all of the time, which was uh, pretty tight. So basically, if I was fighting anything less than a uh, like a revenant, that was just that was that was my my jam, man, all the time. So yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say I want to if, if we have enough time, because there's a lot to unpack in this game, um, I yes. want to expand on mods. And here's what I'll do for you. If we don't get to mods during the episode, can the after show be about weapon mods? Oh, I think that that this is going to be one of the exceptions to the rule where the after show is just going to be more of the game. Like normally the after show is just us like kind of shooting it and, you know, like like talking. This is just going to be more of the game where we're going to say like, okay, we have to cut this off at some point. Now let's continue to to talk or what, because there's just so much to unpack here. So without further ado, visuals. 
Um, so before we talk about any of the game visuals, uh, I have a fun side story for you. So, cool. uh, you played this game on, uh, PS4, right? Uh, actually I played it on my new PS5. It was, yeah, you did. I literally forgot yeah, about that until I started to ask the question, but you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, it was, it was literally the first thing I did was boot up my PS5 and play civilization six without it sounding like a helicopter was landing in my uh, <laughs> living room. And then I, I I got to play Doom without it sounding like there was a helicopter landing in my living room. So no, it was it was sweet, it was sleek, it was awesome. Yeah. Thank so <laughs> um, I actually played this on my gaming PC, uh, which was primarily because on for whatever reason the PC version happened to be on sale and none of the console versions were. So I was like, okay, like I'd rather save the ten bucks. Uh, and I knew my PC could handle it and everything, so I was fine. Um, so I have in front of me right now one of those ridiculous clicky clacky RGB keyboards that like lights up right now. It's on this cool, like rainbow cycle. Cause I'm super basic and I just, it brings me joy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever, man, some computer games, uh, know that you have this hardware and they like do fun stuff with it. So when you play doom, um, it, it makes the lights look like there's a fire behind the keyboard and then like when you're playing the game like sometimes like they flash when you pick up armor or, like when you take damage and stuff and like it's really stupid but i was like this is kind of a visual of the game that like only <laughs> only people who not only play this on pc but also happen to have this brand of keyboard like get this experience and i was like this is i'm kind of happy about this like this is legitimately <laughs> adding to my enjoyment where every time like I would because I play with a controller because again super basic so every time I would pause and set the controller down in the pause menu it's doing the little flame effect on the keyboard and I was just like this is fun this is dumb and fun <laughs> I like this so for me I kind of and this is true of um, the visuals and uh, the the mechanic section is there is so much to unpack here so I've kind of grouped in each category subcategory uh, one of which is help keeps you in the action which is more game mechanics but then also helps you handle the action because basically doom 2016 is supposed to be a mile a minute just slug gore gore fest right like that's that's what the old game was but what they tried to do is they said like okay we basically <laughs> in order to make the game that we want to make we need only super saiyans playing this game right <laughs> So how do we make it so that way everyone who comes in is a Super Saiyan, right? So what they did was they built their Brute Ray machine and then they just bombarded every person that came in. So, so they had to create a whole bunch of stuff in order to make you able to handle the action and be the Doom Slayer. So I've got three quick notes. Um, all of these we can unpack. So for each one of these subsections, pick the one or all of them that you want to discuss more in depth. You can say, I don't want to talk about any of that stuff, but, but I kind of have them grouped together. So, um, so I will make it a little bit easier as one. Um, they, they use visual cues, specifically green. Green is where you go. It is always where you go. If there is ever a question of where should I go? Look for the green, you know? I, so I if, have a note that says red, bad, green, good. And they yeah. have a colorblind mode to deal with that. But if you're playing with the normal <laughs> settings, red, bad, green, good. Yeah, red, bad, green, good. Go to green, right? That's what you got to do. Um, it shows, also helping you handle the action, shows low ammo on your crosshairs when you're low on ammo. Because the thing is, you can't constantly be checking your HUD. The HUD exists, but they know that if the, the, that the split second that you glance down and back up at your HUD, uh, you could die, you know? <laughs> so they, like, they need you 100% dealing with the cognitive load of the bad guys all the time. So it just says low ammo. Um, also, and this is the one I think is the most interesting, is there is um, no, and this is a little bit mechanically, but there is zero hit scan weapons. Every weapon is a projectile weapon, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, cause, and that's a change from the original Doom. The original Doom, the zombie soldiers and the zombie shotgun soldiers both used hit scan weapons. You know, this one... Uh, everyone is 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 all projectiles, which is again a visual cue because that means that you don't need the little doom face at the bottom to turn left and right and show you where the damage is coming from because it's all projectiles, right? So they'll flare up the left side or the right side of the screen to kind of give you an idea. But the thing is that you're gonna see it coming, and more importantly, is that it gives you the opportunity to dodge it, which 
feels amazing. And 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 I'll, I'll like probably ninety percent of the time I would have died was because some you know I saw a bad guy charging up a blast and then they threw it at me and then literally I did like the quick duck out of the way and then shot them in the face and that made me feel awesome you know so the fact that they said you know what let's get rid of all no hit scan weapons you have hit scan weapons they don't you know and that's that's the way that this is going to go um is awesome and i think that most of your weapons are hit scan weapons um the exception being Uh, i mean it's the yeah the the ones that fire obvious projectiles like the plasma rifle and the um the uh, rocket launcher Right, and even with the rocket launcher, again, not strange in mechanics, they have a, a mod to help you with that fat. Yeah. You know, so really, you've got one out of all of your weapons. You have one that shoots projectiles, um, and that's if that's your bag, you know. But uh, outside of that, it's, it's all hit scan. So you you get hit scan weapons. They fire projectiles. So those those are all the things I think that visually helps keep you able to handle the moment to moment action that they're throwing at you. So red, bad, green, good um, extends. Uh, not just to little things in the environment, but it's actually a nearly universal truth in the way they design the visuals, which is useful because it's it's each in each element, it's fairly subtle. But then once you realize like red, bad, green, good, then you start looking for green everywhere, right? It's it's Mr. Mm-hmm. Rogers, like look for the helpers, look for the green stuff, right? The The shield and the armor and the armor pickups are all green. The uh, lights that show you where you need to go platforming are green. Um, you, the hero, are green, right? <laughs> like everything that is good is green and basically everything that is bad is red. And again, that's not just, well, the demons are red and like, you know, blood and guts are red. Mars is red, right? So like yes. you're just constantly re- and hell is red. So like you're in red, scary environments, which makes the little green safety lights pop out. And then you, Mm -hmm. even though you don't often see yourself, but like, you know, you see the little armor pickups, which are green and your armor is green. So it's like, you know, red, bad, green, good. Like, I just, I liked that that permeated throughout, not just the gamey things that help you be successful, but like into the character design and the sort of theming of the world. Like that's, that's fun, right? Because once you, once you internalize that fact, it allows you to navigate the world and combat encounters of which, I mean, that that's all the game is. It's just nonstop yes. combat encounters. But like it allows you to navigate them with a lot more confidence because like you see something red, it's bad. You see something green, yep. it's good. Like you never have to look at a green thing with the one exception of the cyber mancubus, but yep. the cyber mancubus is a flat green and everything else that's green is glowy. The lights where you platform yep. are glowy. The armor pickups are glowy he is basically the only enemy that has any green and he's like a flat, like his, his green doesn't grab you the way all the other greens do. The only other, the only other exception to that rule is I believe the, I, I'm going to screw up what their name is, but like the pit fiend, um, they, uh, they fire a green energy blast, you know, but again, it mm. is, it is a giant green. Oh, those are the, the hell barons, the hell real big ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the 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 biggest outside of the cyber demon. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Like they'll throw um green blasts at you, but you know that's not again. Like you're not gonna see a giant green ball of energy hurtling <laughs> towards you and be like, "Yay, you know, mine!" And and yeah, you know, it's just again, it's 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 really unlikely. And I think that they made that choice because they know how much damage that thing did. And they're like, we don't want you to confuse this with the environment, or we don't want you to confuse this with something else shooting at you. You know, like we don't want you to see this fireball and think it's an imp fireballing you because it's really important that you know that this is going to hit you a ton harder, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. And I I think that's fair. And that's, that's a small enough, like, uh, green isn't universally good that it's like yes okay but when you break from that convention you have to do it in a way that doesn't feel cheap which they did and that's awesome um right to expand on that a little bit uh i really like that almost all of the ui is diegetic like it's not a hundred percent but it's really close um and i just i just like that when it's done well it's just fun and and it's done really well here um down to things you pick up in the environment like health and ammo and armor and stuff are all like glowy 
And I don't think that it's because those things are actually glowy. I think it's because your visor is like, oh, go, go grab those glowy things. Right. Which I need, because again, this is not my genre. So it's like, please, please just beat me over the head with it. Where is health? Where, where are more bullets to put more holes in things that don't have enough holes in them? Like I don't mind having that information shoved down my throat. And it's nice when it feels like, oh, it's because my super Praetor armor is like giving me information about the environment. Not, hey, dummy, health is over yes. here. So I'm here. <laughs> no, 110% agreed. Actually, I think that um, I think that that basically the reason why health is glowing, armor is glowing is that I don't think that the armor, I don't think that you're actually picking up a shield. Right. It's I think that <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're not charging into battle with your tower yeah, shield. Right. But your your visor is your doom armor. Is, your Praetor armor is saying like this is an armor bonus. It is worth this much. So and basically that explains any kind of gamey mechanics because, you know, it is it's it's just the way the suit is highlighting this stuff for you um, up to and including. And this would have been a great segue, but we're not done with visuals is uh I think that the rock music is what the Doom Slayer is hearing, you know? Oh, and like he, he's got his uh, Doom pods on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I want to believe that that's also the Praetor armor. So when it, because it, the minute that all of a sudden you run in and you know a bunch of demons show up, right? Like your your Praetor armor will say, or and the alarms will say, you know, demons detected, right? So. Your armor is aware of the fact that there are demons around. So it just starts piping in this like amazing metal music. And then when the last demon is killed, it stops piping in the music because it's like, okay, well, you, you, you can calm down a bit now. So again, that's a, a, a music note, but in my mind, that's my headcanon is that anything that feels gamey about this game is just your Praetor armor, making sure you survive it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that headcanon. Um, I, I have one other major thing for the visuals. Uh, that I wanted to mention, not because it's super deep, but just it's important to me that I say it, which is I still managed to get lost a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. But the reason that I think this is worth bringing up is because the map is not helpful to me. Like, I don't think the map is detailed enough. And in some places, it was weirdly too detailed, where it was like, (laughs) oh, there's this little tiny platform between these two other platforms. But then other similar sized platforms didn't necessarily appear on the map. And I just there were a handful of times that I really struggled to figure out like, oh, I can't on the map. It looks like I can go straight from here to there, but I super can't. I got to go way mm-hmm. around or I got a platform over this thing. And and the two things that helped me adjust to that were one, accepting how much platforming you have to do in this game, which is supported by the green good go toward green. Right. So like once, you know, yep. you also have to look up for green stuff like then it's it, it it helps a little bit with figuring out getting from a to b um and the other thing is and this is just a weird thing but like if you look at the map you would say like oh my god these maps are huge these levels are huge they're not if you look at your token on the map you are massive and if you like yes. run for two seconds and then you reload the map you will see how much ground you covered the levels actually aren't that large and that was I didn't realize that at first and that was making it hard for me to navigate because I was like, oh my God, this is way over there. Like it's going to take me forever to get over there. And then I would walk and I would let the amount of time pass that I thought needed to pass. Then I would open the map and I would be like, "What? how did I get way the hell over here? (laughs) (laughs) I just had a lot of those weird kind of like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't internalizing well how to navigate the environment and how to use the navigation tools to navigate the environment. And I did sort of settle on it somewhere around like the halfway mark, but I was until I did, I found navigating the first few levels incredibly frustrating. Yeah. I, I would agree with you that I got lost maybe a handful of times. I will say that, um, cause getting lost in, in doom two was also a huge problem, you know? Uh, so I would say it was way less than Doom 2. You know, they no, took massive all Massive improvement, no question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would say I did get lost a couple of times. Um, the things that they do is, one, like you said, green good. Uh, two, uh, they, they, they will put pickups in the direction that you need to go generally. So if you say, like, oh, I'm going to go get this armor, you know, it'll generally head you kind of in the right direction. Uh, three, enemies tend to be in the direction you're supposed to be going in. So... If all of a sudden, which is also helpful when they're throwing projectiles at you, because if all of a sudden you get nailed by 
an imp, you know, you, you turn and you look, you're like, oh, I guess, I guess I gotta go that way. Thanks friend. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> also too, one of the things that they did that I thought was kind of clever is, um, so one is they've got, they've got waypoints up, right. Uh, on your compass in your HUD all the time. Right. Of uh, where, where you're supposed to go because the, the, they don't want you to be doing that type of exploration, which I'll, Put a pin in and get back to in a second. But one of the things that they'll do that I thought was kind of clever is that let's say that you know you've got to go get the yellow key in order to open the yellow door. They'll put the yellow door waypoint on there, but it'll be yellow. So if you go there and you're like, oh, I can't open the yellow door, you now know to ignore the yellow waypoint and go to the not yellow waypoint, which is uh, I thought I thought that was kind of clever. Um, the uh, so the one the one last kind of big note for visuals that I had that I thought was kind of interesting, right? Is that so? There, there are a lot of um, you know core aesthetic. I would say the main core aesthetic that this thing is trying to play on is uh, challenge, right? I mean, like you said, is it's just it's all combat, right? It's it's a a series of vignettes, right? You know, um, so I'd say that that's the core one. But initially, as I as I said, you know, that's the nice thing about this game is that like exploration isn't a core aesthetic, and it doesn't try to make it one, except that it is, you know, um, because if they didn't want exploration to be a mechanic, they wouldn't have um, health the way they have health. They would be constantly regenerating, right? Um, on top of that, you know, they have secrets. They have secrets in every stage. They want you exploring these stages. Um, but then I, I kind of, I put some thought into it. And the reason why I think that this is, is, is interesting is because it's, it's exploration, but fast. Whereas take, taking Breath of the Wild to use as a counterexample, that's exploration, but slow, right? Both have the core aesthetic of exploration. You would never conflate those two experiences, right? You know, when you're exploring in Zelda, you're gliding on a hang glider from point A to point B and Whee! taking in the scenery, Whee! you know, um, which is <laughs> in Doom, that's not, that's not what's going down, right? Um, and I think that, that you know, there's a, I thought it was just fascinating that in both of those things, even though the experience is wildly different, is it is exploration, but it's pacing. And it's done well through the, the way that Doom manages its visuals versus like if you take Zelda, literally they'll say, go find this place and they'll show you a picture of it, right? So you're constantly looking at the picture and then looking at the environment and then looking at the picture and then looking at the environment, right? Because it's pacing and handle that. Doom says, we need you to go from here to here. If you want to go explore, you do that on your own time. But uh, and 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 they have some things to help facilitate that. But uh, yeah, I thought that that was kind of interesting that it's still exploration, just on a timetable. Well, and a lot of the exploration is even thematically on brand because there's a lot of little secrets where, like, you look at the map because you you can upgrade the Praetor armor to eventually just be like, here's where all the secrets are. Go get them if you want them. Um, but yep. you still have to figure out how to get there because it's often very circuitous or roundabout. It's, you can't just go straight to it. And mm -hmm. a lot of them are these like crazy leaps of faith where it's like, OK, I'm up high and I can see that this secret is down low. And there's like this little visual cue of like a there's a glowy health pickup down there. Or I can see like, you know, a green light on the on this ledge a million billion miles away. And it's like, uh, I guess I'm going to go for it. And because as far as I can tell, you can't manually save in this game. It's checkpoints only. There were a couple times where I had been exploring for a while. And then I was like, Ooh, there's a secret over there. And I got to jump across this massive pit to get to it. And uh, I'm going to go find some monsters to kill and then come back and jump across this massive pit just in case <laughs> I'm wrong. Right. Like right. it was, it was sort of a weird thing, but I, I like that. Not only is it uh fast paced in the way you're describing, but they are, basically saying you now have to look around the environment and use these subtler cues like the colors and things that aren't appearing on the map or they're appearing like weirdly far away on the map and you have to use that information to you know make these giant leaps of faith or you know crawl under something or climb over something or whatever and and that's you have all the information you need to be successful so they're almost more like tiny puzzles like they're like platforming navigation puzzles they're not like in old doom where it's like, just bang your head against every brick until a wall opens. Right. And I, I appreciate that. Cause it feels like this is all, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of that. Right. It's like, <laughs> this is all discoverable. Um, and that, that makes it 
also more satisfying to explore because you feel like you overcame a challenge, not that you were just lucky and pressed on the right brick. Agreed completely. We don't have to uh, go super deep on this if you're not interested, but I feel like we're both uh, like our our berserk, uh, you know, power up is still active. And we almost left visuals without talking about the monster design. Like we have to talk about the enemy design, right? We, we, we absolutely can. And the, the last thing I have for visuals and then we'll, we can end it on the, the monster design is because uh, I just feel that it, it needs to be addressed in case anybody's like, you know, man, they, they seem to be saying that this is a great game. I'm going to go out and buy it. It is intensely gruesome. It takes <laughs> all of the gore and, and, and the blowing apart of bad guys and all of that. And it just heightens it up to an 11 and it mechanically incentivizes you to experience the gore so um i just for my own conscience i feel that i have to say that out loud is that it's uh it's rated m for a reason uh well, so keep, so I, keep I that think, in mind i think that actually dovetails really well with um talking about the monster design because everything is you know ribs sticking out and teeth and viscera and blood and guts and gore and rippling muscles but with like no skin over them like everything is you know imagine doom 2 and now yep. give those people 25 million dollars and 30 years and imagine what they would do and you would have doom 2016 right like that's how we got here so yep the the reason i think this is fascinating is because this is not a horror game you are deeply empowered mechanically and I'm, i know we will get to all that but i also didn't find any of the visuals horrifying just on their own merits as visuals and i as you know as any of our listeners who have heard us talk about other spooky stuff know i don't like blood and guts and gore and even though that's all this game is from start to finish it is non-stop yeah. ultra violence because it's nonstop ultra violence. It takes on this like Quentin Tarantino kind of vibe where everything mm -hmm. is just silly. Like it's not, yeah. it is, it is super gross. And if you don't like blood and guts and gore, you will not like this game, but it's not scary. It is a 13 year old's idea of what hell would be like, like, oh man. And then like, he'll have like guns coming out of his eyeballs. And like this other guy will have like, <laughs> he'll have arms that are giant mandibles and he'll like chew your face off with them. And he'll be like, whoa. Right. And he's like scribbling on the back of his, you know, science folder when he should be paying attention in chemistry class in junior year or whatever. Like that's what this game is. And the best way I can encapsulate this uh, is <laughs> I was playing this. And, uh, something like jumped out at me and I went like, oh my, and I like blew its head off. And then I'm, I'm like yeah. running and like something else like started attacking me. And I was like, come here, you come, yeah, God, come on, come on. Where are you going? Don't run. Don't run. <laughs> and like, just kind of, <laughs> kind of being silly with it. And Susan said to me, like, you know, the kids are asleep upstairs. Like you, you can swear if you want to. And I was like, but that's the thing. <laughs> I don't need to swear because I'm not afraid. I am in charge yeah. here. And keep in mind i'm yeah. saying this while i'm like chainsawing things faces in half and so right I, it's the the visuals are i mean just hyper hyper blood and guts right just like non-stop the environment is covered in blood and guts everything is blood and guts all the time but it's not scary it's it's a 13 or 14 year olds interpretation of oh man you know what would be cool right which is not the same as you know what would make you shit your pants, right? Those are two very different <laughs> aesthetics. Well, and agree completely. And I think that that two two things on that note, and then we can jump to audio. Um, is uh, one is is kind of the first story I said where you know I was like, oh yeah, I gotcha. Whoops, because again, like something just jumped out at me, and I had the same again, like the Doom Slayer, that same reaction of like, oops, I missed one. Not oh god, a demon is about to flay me. It's like oh no, I. I, I I missed one of the cockroaches and I stepped on it and then moved on with life. Right. Uh, unlike the demon, it, did, it decidedly did not move <laughs> on with life. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but actually um, when we, when I fought the cyber demon, right. Um, you know, so the, the first, I'd say the first boss, right. Real boss, you it, know, it, is um, that one, the first one that actually it shows the health meter on screen. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that yeah. one, there's, 
the crab one, and then I think the final mm-hmm. boss. Is it just those three that have health meters? Just, the, just those three, to my knowledge. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and again, it was kind of cool because each, each aside from the crab demons, the cyber demon and the spider demon were both, you know, they were both big bads, you know, and you were always scary, so they just made them bigger, badder, and scarier. Um, so. I killed that thing and then it, it brought up the little blurb. So it's got, you know, the giant picture of this huge demon with like a cannon for an arm, which to your point is very much so, you know, what you would draw in your 13 year old notebook. Right. And I'm sitting there reading it and I, you know, cause Megan is, you know, looking up and down. So I never know when she's paying attention. Uh, she said, I'm sorry. The good guys made that. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, Yes, she's like, so wait, wait. So the 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 people in charge of this operation found that thing and they put the weapons on it. And I said, yes, which is ostensibly why there are no good guys in this one because <laughs> I said it would be probably better to say the protagonists did that, not not the good guys. There are there's no good guys in the the hell harvesting in the hell energy harvesting game, right? That's interesting because I'm so just I, I need to get your opinion on this. My thinking had always, you know, cause there's the revenant that's got the rockets, right. But then the, mm-hmm. the mancubus and the cyber mancubus, like they have their, you know, like gun arms and little rocket launchers and stuff. And there are, there's a lot of like body horror, like technology coming out of flesh and stuff like that. I never thought of any of that as things humans did to the demons i always just thought of that as like these are demons that just have like cyber technology because reasons because because doom yeah because doom because why not and that's the cool thing is they they kind of let you explore if if you're interested in it right they have all these little codexes that you can pick up but um which is how i how i got the information it was not research um so (laughs) it was in the game it counts uh, yeah it counts it counts um, but no, so which is one of the things that, and this is a brief tangent that, that I find fascinating about Doom 2016 is that, you know, because in Doom, like the portal to hell opens up and you have to go beat back hell, right? In this one, the portal to hell was intentionally opened. And not only were they doing it to stall the energy crisis, as the robot dude will let you know over and over again, um, but they were actually pulling demons out and experimenting with weaponizing them and augmenting them. So all of the mancubi, all of the revenants, all of the human tech that you see is them trying to weaponize hell, which means that they're going and finding the Denzians of hell and torturing them. So really, it's like there's humans, then hell, a level lower, (laughs) then these people who are running this operation, right? You know, whom you're ostensibly fighting for, you know, like, so it's, it really kind of conflates like the, you're, you haven't, you you think when you get to hell that you've hit the bottom of the barrel, but apparently there's still, it can get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) yeah, that's, and even though I didn't really dig in on the codexes, I realize now that the all the signs are there because when you get into the last area um, of Olivia's like Lazarus lab, there's the weird hologram mm-hmm. like welcoming welcoming people to work, and it's like if you have any questions about our decision to weaponize the demons, talk to Jessica in HR. And I was just like, <laughs> someone. So there was an employee tasked with like recording that line of dialogue. And at no point did he think that was unusual. And then you find out that Olivia was running a cult and it's like, Oh no, no, he did not think that that was unusual. Yeah, no, it, it, they, they actually, for a game that has, that goes out of its way to tell you that narrative is not one of the core aesthetics. They've actually done a pretty awesome job with their world building on this one, you know? Um, but yeah, so audio. Yeah, I mean, as you said, you're just hearing crazy rock music in your uh, Prater pods, your eye Praters. No, <laughs> do, Doom pods in I like your Doom Prater pods. pods. Yeah, yeah. Pr- Prater, I don't know. It just doesn't roll off tongue. Doom pods, though. Doom pods. Yeah. yeah. But you're you're hearing r- crazy rock music in your Doom pods, pretty much nonstop, um, unless you've been out of combat long enough, and then it does stop. And again. Mm-hmm. 
I appreciated that. Not just for like the emotional break of like coming down a little bit, but it lets you know <laughs> that it's safe to come down. Like, yeah. oh, if, if you've reached the end of your, you know, Doom playlist, then that means they're all dead for now. Like, the, yes, obviously mm-hmm. there will be more, but you can, you know, put the controller down for a second and like crack your knuckles. You could take a sip of water, right? I mean, yeah, the game, you can pause the game, but like, it's just nice to have that emotional like release. Yeah, like- of like, oh, you did it. <sighs> yep. Yeah. That's, yeah and, 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 and I love the way they did it because there's no ambient music. There are ambient sound effects, but there's no ambient music. If music is happening, combat is happening. Yeah. It, yeah. No, absolutely. And I will definitely say that some of the combat is so intense that literally I could feel my muscles tensing up as I was playing. <laughs> so it was nice because not only um, do they, uh, uh, does the, the music stop? And actually, uh, I, I noticed that because it, it always feels organic right like the music just always seems to like trail off right when you're killing that last guy which is that the the music actually starts ending when you are killing the last demon you know so if you're doing a glory kill on the last demon which is probable um that's when it actually starts the ending the ending riff you know so so that's kind of cool also um always a checkpoint when you when you end the combat vignette it's a checkpoint so the music ends, it says checkpoint reached, you're good, you know? And there were definitely times when I had just, I had missed an imp who was just around somewhere. So, you know, like I killed all of the big demons and I was like, all right, but it was like, and I was like, what, 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 why? And then, you know, I just kind of start looking around and then I find like, bam, I'd be like, ah, gee, come on. And then just blow that guy away. And then music went in. Like, okay. So, so now I got them all. Uh, but again, super, super nice because you 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 know that you're still in danger as opposed to OG Doom 2 where sometimes you'd just be walking around and all of a sudden get tagged by something and it would kill you. And you'd be like, well, that was fun. One of the things that you said that there are sound effects, right, is um, enemies make a specific noise, right? Like the different enemies make different noises, which can key you into what you're dealing with, you know? Uh, the noises that I remember the most are... Um, the imps that hiss they make uh is and that's straight out of doom 2 also the mancubi have a weird like like you know like yeah i, I literally have a note that says sound effects inspired by doom because like all the yes. sound effects are like doom brand sound effects yeah they just they just took them and polished them off and turned them up to 11 uh so anyways, basically it's it, it allows you to again modulate your level of fear and also too when you you know, are running down a hallway and there's a T junction and you don't look down there, but you hear the mancubus or the Baron of hell or something like that. You hear that noise because you've passed by them. You're like, okay, I'm not going to. And then you keep running down the hallway and you see something else you don't want to deal with. You know, not to double back and go down that other hallway because there's also hateful stuff down there, you know? So, you know, to either fight your way through, but again, it's just, it's feeding you every it's it's as though they said we need to take every single way that your brain can process information and utilize it to the best of our ability because we're going to be throwing a ton of stuff at you so all of it eyes ears i mean like if this thing had the a chemical generator in it they would have used smell you know (laughs) i mean in 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 a literal and figurative way this game is kind of a bullet hell game right there's crap flying around constantly and you are having to process a huge amount of information um something that i, I want to make sure i don't forget just because you you mentioned it in part uh but i want to like celebrate its awesomeness is when you are finishing off the last demon uh in a combat encounter the music winds down in a way that feels like the song doesn't just fade out the song ends right ends. and it, it feels yeah. intentional there's also um, certain I, don't, I, I didn't stress test this, but glory kills in general and maybe certain glory kills it, against certain kinds of monsters also do things to the audio where there'll be like a like a like a slide down the neck of an electric guitar. Um, and it's like super grungy. And like there's a few different little modifications like that that happen. Uh, side note, back to visuals. When you do a glory kill uh, by default, everything else in the background fades out. And it so mm. all of the camera focus, literally the focus of the camera is just on like this extra heinous thing that's happening. That's like filling the and, entire screen. And also just while we're touching on it real fast, so we don't have to deal deal with it again later. 
is you're invulnerable when you're doing that, which is also like really important. Yeah. So literally the entire. So and again, I like that kind of within the theme of the universe where it's like when you're do when Doom guy is doing his glory kill, the world falls away. <laughs> <laughs> like all, all there is is the music and the kill, you know? Yeah. And the thing that I think is cool about that, that music that happens during the kill is, you know what it made me think of uh, when Mario's riding Yoshi? Because <laughs> they had to... I'm never going to hear that the same way again, man. Right. It's amazing. But, but I, I'm sure a lot of games do this, and I'm sure this is super hard, uh, which is why I think it's so cool. It's... Not only did they, because there's multiple pieces of combat music, right? It's not always the combat song. There's like a few different uh, songs. And that means that they all have to be composed in such a way that they can figure out programmatically roughly how soon the combat is going to end mechanically so that the song can end. And they had to, whatever they do with the glory kill, the, the guitar sliding sound or whatever, they have to duck the song and then do that and not have it sound like weird. Like somebody started playing a different piece of music while you're listening to this other piece of music. Like that's, it's gotta be hard. Right. And the, the higher fidelity the music gets where there's more instruments and more crap going on and more sound effects and just more of everything. It must be harder and harder to do that. Oh, when Mario's riding Yoshi, it's the same piece of music, except there's like you know, little bongo drums. Right. And to say like, oh, uh, yeah, when you, you know, snap a demon's neck off of its rotting corpse, there's like a little guitar slide. Like it, it's a small little detail, but I'm sure a huge amount of work goes into those two effects, right? The glory kill guitar slide and the uh, the song fading out in a way that doesn't sound like abrupt or stupid. Like that's that ain't easy, but it, it's like that level of polish is is felt even by people who can't appreciate it and appreciated by anyone who would recognize it. Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, a, a whole lot of time and energy went into this. Um, the, there's one other, I have like one other real note and then just kind of a, a throwaway one. Um, when you take a ton of damage or when you get low on health, I, I couldn't really distinguish the two because those two things tend to go hand in hand. Um, your, your armor makes a, a little noise. It goes like, Beep like that it makes a, a a quick little warning noise um to let you know that hey focus up you know you 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 just got hit really really hard or you need to go find health immediately again it keeps you from having to manage your hud you know so i i very rarely during combat i almost unless i was in breaking from one group of demons and going to another i'd sometimes look down real fast and check what my health was at outside of that i didn't look down i just when i would hear that noise i would know okay i need to start like fighting more aggressively because again they have the glory kill which is their way of making that your thought pattern not i need to go find cover because i'm i'm hurt it's i need to go kill more demons because i'm hurt um so uh so i thought that that was a, a good thing and you know using the the audio to to not make you have to uh manage your hud um the one cool little thing I thought is that when you when you find the Funko Pops of Doom Guy, it uh, it it <laughs> they are it Funko plays Pops, a, right? <laughs> um, it plays a little uh sixteen bit riff of uh, you know, like some of the music. It, yeah, it's like dun -dun 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 -dun. yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, like some of the old Doom music. And I was like, ah, oh, that's neat. That was just neat. I liked it. Yeah. Um, another thing that the sound effects do uh, that you're I, I think it's it's another really subtle thing that supports everything you just said, which is the sound effect volume, or at least the perceived volume, is changing constantly. And the thing that made me notice that was when you are murder housing demons, there's not as much blood and guts splorking noises as you would mm. probably expect based on what you're seeing, except during a glory kill or the chainsaw. Then there's a lot of blood and guts splurking noises, but it's because you, you, the player are free to hear them because during the chainsaw, which is a fancy glory kill or during the glory kill, you are invulnerable. So you kind of have, even though it's only like a second, but like you have a second to revel in all of the splurking. Whereas if the splurking was constantly happening during active combat, it would be 
distracting. It's not giving you any useful information that the visuals already aren't giving you. Like it would be counterproductive. And so I appreciated that the where enemies are and whether or not they are attacking and you picking things up and like it makes a little like blink kind of noise when you when you pick stuff up and you firing your weapon, those all make noises at basically full volume all the time. And there's like quiet splurking. And then when you do glory kill, they're like, nah, everything else is going to fade away and we're going to focus on the splurking sounds and the thing making the splurking sounds. And I just, yes, it, because this all <laughs> has to happen in like seconds or fractions of seconds, it, it's going up and down a lot, but it's always very smooth. It never feels like sounds are suddenly getting loud or suddenly getting quiet or they're quiet when they should be loud or loud when they should be quiet. Like it's, it's a, a million billion really smooth audio transitions for all of the visual fastness for all of the visual quickness that's happening um there's just as much like auditory quickness that's happening which is i i don't honestly think this would feel like as smooth of an experience without that right without that it would feel it would feel choppier because the the audio would be kind of misaligned from how smooth the visuals play out No, I mean, everything, I mean, from the visuals to the audio and to the controls and mechanics. um, Yeah, uh, it it it, again, this is definitely one where they've got a a an engine running at 10,000 RPMs, you know, and a single grain of sand getting into the machine would cause it to come to a grinding halt. You know, so they, (laughs) you, you know, like there's just so much going on and it's so fast paced that. If the sporking sounds, which I'm sure that probably in one iteration of it, they they you know said, okay, dial it back, dial it back, dial it. Okay, there, that's where it should be, you know. And it just iterative playtesting over and over and over again. And I think that that's also kind of why they went for these vignettes, you know, because they, again, they 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 probably said, all right, there's going to be, you know, the person who's doing the level design, you're going to have these seven combat encounters design the combat encounter level and then just design the piping that pipes you between those with like secrets and all that kind of stuff. But we need to make sure that each one of these combat scenarios plays out in a satisfying way over 10,000 iterations, because um, it, this is what the game is. This is all the game is. This is what the game does. Uh, we, we are officially in controls and mechanics. Cause I really appreciated that segue. Um, <laughs> but the, the only other thing I want to make sure I tack on about the audio is uh, the visuals are the you know thirteen year old idea of what hell would look like and hey what would be cool music hundred percent same thing right nothing yep. in the 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 soundtrack is oh this is scary and oh demons there's very little use not none but there's very little use of things like scary choir like oh and it's mostly mm-hmm. during short cutscene sequences right when you are in control and you're being doom guy you put your doom pods in and you put on your you know, Danish death metal soundtrack and it's just and that's super empowering, right? It's not scary. You don't feel like, oh no, demons, they're coming to get me. Like, oh no, demons, I'm going to get them. Right. So yeah. like there's just the the audio supports the not horror of not horrorness of it, right? Like everything looks scary, right? But it's not. And everything sounds intense but it's not scary right there's there's no horror here like this this game that is full of demons and blood and guts and you literally go in and out of hell half a dozen times is like eh, it's not it's not scary yeah no i i would say that um uh, uh, the game does a great job of i'd say that the the three times that i can think of but and really two where truly the game hits you with a quick moment of horror is when they introduce the bosses right the Mm -hmm. um the cyber demon and the uh, brain. The oh, wait, uh, uh, the spider mastermind. Spider mastermind. Nailed it. Thank you. Um, so uh, but the thing is that literally what they do is they have this huge, huge visual of this thing towering down at you. And this, this intense music of, you know, oh, my God, what is this? And then intense rock music, which makes you feel like the doom guy was like, whoa, I got this. You know, like there's that you could even argue that the like when you get thrown into the room with the cyber demon, the moment of horror is look what mankind has done. And at the end, when Olivia gets like sucked into the ground and then she comes back up as the spider mastermind, 
that moment of horror is like, like, oh, like Olivia, like she foolishly gave her soul over to the devil and exactly what one would expect to happen happened. But that's a, that's a moment for you, the player, to share in the horror of the situation, right? Because usually when that's happening, your HUD has gone away and then the HUD comes back because Doom Guy's not horrified. We are horrified. He's not horrified. <laughs> and so when we go back to being Doom Guy, we stop being horrified and then the rock music comes in. Um, so for controls and mechanics, um, again, I've got this split up into to, to, to two sections, the and then just a bunch of other minor notes. So I'm just going to quick go through the uh, keeps you in the action stuff. And then um, uh, so let me know which one of those you want to kind of dig deeper in. Right. So number one, you don't reload ever. Right. You fire your gun until it is out of ammunition. Right. You you do quickly reload the um, the super shotgun. But that's part of every single time you fire. You don't have a magazine. You don't have a clip. You never press the enter button to reload. You just go. Um, you move crazy fast all the time. You are always sprinting all the time. There is no run button. There is no button that makes you move faster or slower. You're always running at full tilt all the time. Um, if you're thinking, I can probably make that jump, the answer is probably yes, you can, especially after you get the double jump because they don't want you constantly thinking like, ah, I don't know, can I make that? You jump ridiculously far, even as far, you know, so, so again, if you're in the middle of combat and you're just jumping, you just you can just go for it. it just keeps you in the action as opposed to kind of guessing as to whether or not you can make that platform um and then the two big ones is one the glory kill system as we said have hinted around before is that basically because the health that you get is proportional to how low on health you are it is always valuable to execute a glory kill right and the more close you are to death the more likely you are to abandon all tactics and dead run at a demon and murder them than you are to try to like find a, a place to hide and regain your health right because that's not what they want they want high risk high reward and then finally keeping you in the action and i thought this one was interesting is uh as you mentioned only checkpoints right so no saves coming you cannot save your game and then play it through and then ah no i took too hard of a hit and then break out of the action and go back you go into the situation with the health and the ammo and the items you got and figure it out you know and the fact that they had this glory kill system uh means that even if you are insanely low in health you can get like 50 percent of it back by just killing a demon off the cuff you know so uh yeah that's all the stuff that keeps you in the action what what of those do you wish to expound upon if any i mean all of it because it's all <laughs> it's all amazing and so here's like my very personal take on that kind of broadly, which is, um, as I've now said, like literally three or four times in just this episode alone, this is not usually a thing I'm very good at. Right. And when I f first played through, I don't know, the, the first level, maybe the first two, even three levels, I was like, this is kind of hard. Right. And I mean, they do a really good job of teaching you the mechanics and explaining the gl glory kill and like, you kind of understand what is expected of you, but it wasn't until very near the end of the game that I realized like, oh, you get a lot more health if you are low on health when you glory kill, right? Like, and it was frustratingly far into the game before I understood exactly how the chainsaw worked. Because I was mm -hmm. like, why would I use the chainsaw when I can just shoot them safely from a distance until they're flashing and then glory kill them? And then I used the chainsaw literally, honestly, by accident. And just ammo came rocketing out. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is amazing because <laughs> as someone who doesn't play these kinds of games a lot, I'm a terrible shot. So, yep. so having something like the super shotgun being my go-to weapon means I was constantly low on shotgun shells right up until I understood how the chainsaw worked. And then I never ran out again because I would just shoot until either everything was dead or until I was out. And then I would go collect more inside the body of an unwilling demon and then i would just go back to what i was doing and that became super clutch in like the final 10 percent of the game because again not a great shot so now because i understand how the chainsaw works i am free to use the most powerful weapons in my arsenal with reckless abandon so yep. I, if i wanted to do everything with the the gauss cannon in sentinel mode which i did then yes i could there just is go. absolutely no reason not to it's amazing <laughs> and then i could just go yeah. and recover ammo so i was like the reason 
I think this is such a not just cool system, but a well done system is it took someone myself who does not consider themselves to be a very good shot, does not consider FPS to be like one of their main genres and basically said, hey, here is this super obvious happy path to success. You need more health. Here's how you get it. You need more bullets. Here's how you get them. You want to shoot things from a million miles away with your ultra powerful gun? Great. Here's an ultra powerful gun. Knock yourself out, right? And and they basically made such it it's it's like a it it's like it's not Skyrim where you could just go in any direction and like, oh, I hope you find a playstyle that works for you. It's Final Fantasy 10 where there you're just in a hallway, right? It's like this is the one true way to be successful with <laughs> with very few little deviations. And then they do such a good job of teaching you those mechanics and making them like the obvious habit loop of like rewarding you when you behave correctly that you internalize them super, super fast. And I think it's cool that a game that is fast paced, visually fast paced, uh, like orally is also fast paced mechanically, but is also learned at like a super accelerated rate, right? You get a million little exposures and you, so you internalize stuff super fast. And I was like, that's, so good like someone who just you know 14 hours ago when i started playing the game would have been like oh man it's gonna be really hard i'm not good at this by the end of the game i was like i am the doom <laughs> oh yeah no absolutely i think that um you know to your point right as we said like this isn't this isn't typically your bag and i think that probably if you were to watch you know turn off your reviewer you know goggles right and and watch somebody play it you'd say there is zero chance I could ever play this game, you know, because it is not only is it an FPS, it is an insanely fast paced FPS, but they do so many things to, to keep you in the action and incentivize the right behavior. And the thing is that um, if you want to kill everybody with the super shotgun, you totally can. And if you want to, for whatever reason, just only go, if you want to say like, Hey man, I want to get headshots with the heavy assault rifle. You can do that. But what's also awesome is they have challenges on each level. So if you want to play suboptimally to say like, I did this cool thing, they say like, Hey, you, you, if you want to just play the game and enjoy being the doom slayer, here's how to do that, man. You get your Gauss cannon, you get Sentinel mode, you get the mastery for it so that way you can move around with it. And then you plow through demons like it's nobody business. You use either a super shotgun or the normal shotgun to clean everything up when you're done. Um, you get the, uh, I don't know if you did this, but if you get the ruin that gives you extra ammo, um, the cool thing about that, did you do any of the ruin trials? I, I did. And I, I do want to dig in on those a little bit, but I don't think I got that particular one. So the awesome thing about that one is that after you uh, pick up 500 ammos from dead demons, uh, you can potentially pick up BFB ammo from dead demons. Which yeah. Means, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which means BFB ammo is suddenly very plentiful. So when all of a sudden I realized that that ruin had become active, uh, I was firing off that BFB like it was nobody's business. Um, because the, the awesome thing about the BFB is that if you're low on health, right, and you fire it, um, all of the demons expo explode into a panoply of health, right? So yeah. it basically Even then takes the, you from... the big bads are still one yeah. shot. It is a problem solver. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, it's, it's the guy that they call in in Pulp Fiction to clean the car, you know? It's, the wolf. Uh, it's the wolf, right? <laughs> it just gets the job done. But then the thing is that not only that, but you go from being at like 20% health, basically completely screwed because you're ho holed in by demons, right? To all of a sudden having no demons around you and you're back at full health, right? Um, three other things I want to categorize and helps you handle the action is um, the mechanically, uh, the game automatically switches your weapon when you're out of ammo, right? So you don't sit there and fire empty. Like the minute that you're out of ammo, it switches you to the next weapon. Um, health drops are proportional to how close to death you are, you know, which we kind of touched on a couple of times. But again, it's super important because if a glory kill always gave you 10 health, then if you were at 20 health, you're not going to, you're still not going to risk it, right? But the the risk is all, the reward is always proportional to the risk, you know? So if you're really, if you're not even close to death, then it's low risk to go in there and try to kill somebody. So therefore it's low reward. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, there are no enemy hit scan weapons, so you don't have to worry about running into the middle of thing and all of a sudden being sniped by bad guys. There are no bad guy snipers, right? There are some 
like the caco demons that will shoot at you from frustratingly far away but that's what they make gauss cannons for you know <laughs> because now you can shoot at them from frustratingly far away and there's nothing better than like just and the thing that's really fun is when you shoot at one of them and you see them fall to pieces and then you see the one that you didn't see behind them also fall to pieces and you're like i didn't even know you were there and now you're dead that was your story is that you were <laughs> hiding behind the other guy and then you just died <laughs> there's a i think one of the later levels has a challenge specifically to kill two Kaku demons with a single shot another way you get the mastery on the the sentinel is uh killing i think it's three or more demons with one shot of the gauss cannon yeah you know so uh so yeah so that's the, the kind of stuff that keeps you uh able to handle the action uh and again you know uh to your point i, I just i feel masterfully done in the sense that it is just I mean, honestly, I would be tired sometimes. Like, I, I would put the controller down after an encounter because I was I was just tired. Not that I was sick of playing. I was having a blast. But I was just, I had just had enough. And the fact that, um, and, 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 and I'll, I'll let, let you get a word, word in edgewise, right? But the fact that, that they have so many humane exit points, there are so many checkpoints, right? Because uh, after every one of those vignettes, so it's saying like, hey, here's your checkpoint. Are you done? Because if you're done, just turn it off and walk away. You're good. You know, if you if you want to go play more, you walk maybe one minute and, and then there's another little fight. And then and then there's another checkpoint, you know. So whenever I was just like, oh, man, I just I think I'm good. You know, I just put it down, pick it up the next day or have Teddy pick it up and, and see the horrible thing with the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> want to play the face with the eyes. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to talk about upgrades because. This is something I had super mixed feelings about going into it because th this is something that Old Doom super did not do, right? You are, however much health you can carry, however much armor you can carry, however much ammo you can carry, that's, that's what you got, right? And being able to upgrade the amount of health you have, the amount of armor you have, the amount of ammo you can carry is already like a little... RPG -E, which to your point, like you're incentivized to stay in the action because the way you upgrade your weapons is through murder, right? So like yes. all of your weapon upgrades, they're like, yeah, if you, the more you murder, like we'll help you murder better. Um, and then there's also the, so those are the Praetor, no, those are the, the Argent energy upgrades. Then, yeah. then the Praetor suit upgrades give you like mostly mechanical like, oh, this will help you find secrets or, oh, this like now exploding barrels won't hurt you. Right. Like it's it's mostly just like nice to have other yeah. than the, the secrets ones. I didn't think most of the, the Praetor suit upgrades were like must haves. Um, yeah. The, se the secret ones like have an amazing ROI because basically, you know, you you you, you invest one point in the thing that vibrates when you're near a secret. And then I think like within 10 minutes, you find another Praetor suit token from using that. And I was like, well, paid for itself. So great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that one was, um, one of the, the few ones I cared about because I wanted to make sure I got the Argent energy upgrades, which are super valuable. Um, the weapon mods, I like, I only deeply cared about a couple of them. And then the rest, I was just like, I don't, I don't care about this. And it, it's not because I don't think they were all good and interesting. It's just, I very quickly found based on the descriptions of them. I was like, this suits my play style. This suits my play style. This suits my play style. And now I've reached mastery with them and I'm good. Like this is now until these stop solving my problems, I'm not going to go look for different solutions because I'm here to solve problems, not to solve problems in novel ways. So <laughs> as soon as I found like all purpose problem solvers, I was like, all right, good. Um, the runes though, I thought were interesting because those are the part of the game where they just go, Hey, did you guys all forget that this is a video game? This is a video <laughs> game. We're going to literally have some challenges that are just isolated little things that make no goddamn sense in the middle of this, like ostensibly horror story. And, uh, you know, then, uh, we'll give you some magic on the other side of that. There'll be some magic. Probably that'll be neat. Maybe. And, and, and it was just like, it's kind of funny that, it was so important to them to include these little like fun challenges that the fact that they are universe shattering as far as like <laughs> the, the story goes is just totally glossed over. Like 
the characters never mention them. It's just like a thing that happens and it's fine, I guess. Um, yeah, but there's a bunch of them. I think there's 12 runes and I only got like four or five. And the one that I got, I think literally the first one I got was the one that helps you pull in stuff from further away. Mm. And I was like, Oh, this is the, I'm not very good at this game rune because now anywhere I kill a demon, their health and stuff will fly into me. I don't have to then go over to where their corpse happened. If their corpse happens, I get the reward for it, which is what I need because I'm constantly on the move. So like that was super, super clutch. And then there's one that I, I couldn't unlock in time, but I really wanted, which is the one that when you glory kill, they also drop armor. Cause I was like, if I oh, wasn't yeah. incentivized enough to glory kill enemies, also <laughs> dropping armor would really push me into just like glory kill everything. Yes. All the things. Um, yeah, no, I, and, and, and to your point, right. I, and I don't think that we touched on this is, uh, you know, narrative, not, not a core aesthetic. Right. And, and again, it's, I think that they, to your point is that this is a game made for us, right? It's not made for somebody who wants to understand the mythology of the Doom universe. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a game, you know, it's a, it's a call, but the whole thing is a reference, you know? So, I mean, literally, I love, I love the fact that you, you the first thing you do is you wake up, you kill a, you kill an enemy, you get your, your armor on. And then all of a sudden, like somebody's like, Hey, I've got to give some exposition to you. Here's the, ex-. and you just punch the screen and you move on. Right. You know, it's, it's like, that's the game literally looking directly at you and saying, is that, is that what you wanted? Cause if it is, that's not what you're here for. Like, that's not what we're doing, you know? And then, and then they later on actually do give you some pretty decent plot. Well, one of the other, this is again, a little tangential. I love what's the name of the scientist dude, the robot. I forget his Harden. name. Samuel Harden. Yeah. Samuel Harden. I, I think I love the fact is he, he's he's in it to make Argent energy, man. You know, he's in it to to solve problems, right? And one of the problems was the Earth's energy crisis, and he solved it, right? Arguably, well, <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty green solution. So he um he 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 solves this problem, right? And so then when the Doomslayer is trying to shut down the portal, he's like, "Don't destroy the accumulators." And then the Doomslayer destroys all of the accumulators, and he says, "Like, you know, you have no idea what you've done." And then you meet him later, and I just love that he says, I remember the line, as he said, the loss of the Argent accumulators is devastating, but we have to move on, you know? Like, you can tell, he, he hasn't forgiven you, he is very deeply vexed by this, but, I mean, all hell's broken loose, so he's got to go <laughs> deal with that first. I don't know, it's just, uh, it's fascinating that they, that, that in so many ways, the game manages to thread the needle of, well, you need some reason why you're doing this, but we're not going to label it on too deep, you know. In any amount of this that you care about, look in the codex, you know, um, and do it on your own time. Yeah, I I like. We thought about this. Like, there is a world that exists, and we wrote a story that happens in this world. But the character you are playing, and the way we want you to feel, doesn't care about any of that. So. Yep. If you, the player, want to know more about the world, we'll give you enough information that you hopefully feel satisfied. But you, the Doomslayer, give zero craps about him, her, any of this. That yep. is not, you're not here to save anyone. You're not here to help anybody do anything. You are here to kill demons and also kill demons. Yeah, and I think that because Samuel Harden at one point he says, you know, something, something, something which you would probably argue that we should kill all of the demons. And I remember getting a kick out of that because the Doomslayer don't argue nothing. He just kills demons, you know? Like, literally, this is one of the few times when having a silent protagonist makes 100% sense because I don't think the Doomslayer said anything during that entire game, both within the game, but actually within the narrative. Is I think that literally... <laughs> 100% his actions just speak volumes. You know, he didn't talk to anybody. He just shows up, stares blankly at them while they monologue about their big intentions, and then he goes and kills demons. That's what he does, you know? So um, the two two other kind of throwaway notes I have is one is uh, the tutorial is actually laid out over a extraordinarily long period of time and that they are just slowly adding mechanics. Like, you don't get the double jump until probably 
two to three hours into the game. You oh, know, it's, if, it's, if not longer, it's far yes. in. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they're like, OK, we're just going to we're going to give you a lot, but we're going to give it to you one one thing at a time. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then also and this is just a minor thing, but again, shows the, the thought that was put into it is um, health stations. So they have health stations that will bring you back up to full health, um, which is important because the game devs need to know sometimes that. Yeah, sometimes you'll be at low health, sometimes you'll be at high health. I want to know that you're at full health. So here's a health station. They don't open if you're at full health. You cannot use them. Which I thought was clever. No, no. You, know, so you can't. They don't open at full health. You cannot waste them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can't waste them. You can't say, "Oh no, I, I meant it." Nope. You know. So uh, again, just little things like that that uh, are are pretty pretty clutch. Uh, my last uh, like random story I wanted to share, just because I I think this is a nice bookend to your like, "Ha ha, gotcha." Oops. Is the <laughs> yeah. the number of times in this game. I caught myself like reflexively saying employee of the month, ladies and gentlemen, because <laughs> just the, the AI is actually fairly, it's very consistent monster type to monster type, but like imps mm-hmm. always behave like imps. The guys with like the big mega buster arm cannons actually behave fairly strategically compared to most of the demons. Like they try to shoot you from far away. Uh, the the big guys that run and jump and charge at you, like they always run and jump and charge at you, right? Like the the Kaku demons behave like Kaku demons, and they all behave a little bit differently, but they all behave very consistently, so that they're very learnable. Which means when you get powerful weapons like the Gauss cannon and the plasma rifle and super shotgun, and you have like quad damage turned on, and some imp is like, "Rar, I will defeat you," <laughs> <laughs> and they come charging up to you, and you just blast. Just in yeah. pieces go everywhere, <laughs> especially because I use the Gauss cannon so much, dude. Once I had Sentry Mastery and I could move with the charged up oh, yeah. Gauss cannon, so I would be like blowing holes through like Cacodemons and Mancubuses, and then I still have the Gauss cannon out, and some imp would be like "rar," <laughs> and I would just reduce <laughs> him to a mist. Like I would, I would vaporize the atoms that made up his intentions. And just be like, <laughs> you saw what I was doing. What the hell did you think was going to happen? You know what it is? It's uh, to, to, to bring a wholesome thing into it. It's, it's like in Steven Universe when the Ruby is like, I'll be the one who killed Rose Quartz, you know? <laughs> That's what it is. is, is the, the imp is like, oh, they sent all of Hell's armies, but it was me that slayed the dooms. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Whoops. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 and again, it kind of shows the tone of the game is is that of empowerment, and, and and honestly, it's it's supposed to be ridiculous and funny because yeah, just it's there were so many times where I was like, whoops, or oh no, you know, just like little, I, I was never at the edge of my seat because I was afraid. Sometimes I was tense because there was so much stuff going on and I wanted to be successful, but I was never scared. I was just do it. It. it this is the Doom Slayer's job. He punches a clock, man. So, you know, he came into work, gonna kill some demons, you know, a bunch of people are gonna, you know, the manager's gonna come in and talk about the strategic priorities of the initiative, <laughs> and you're like, here to kill demons, man, you know? And it's like, why did you do that? And it's like, because it helped me kill demons. And it's like, well, you know, I'm gonna have your head for that. No, you won't, because I'm the only guy down here killing demons, you know? Like, just do whatever you want. I, You almost feel a little immune to it you know like so i don't know it's just it's it's it again and to be able to execute on that with so much action and so much gore and the fact that you're literally fighting hell and it's kind of a comedy is uh i don't know it's impressive (laughs) (laughs) so uh if, if we haven't given the trick away enough um were i to say how i thought this game held up uh as a new nostalgia game i would say goodly uh, this game hold up, <laughs> hold up goodly. Um, and I think it's, it's worth being very clear. Uh, this game was very enjoyable and I would recommend this to anyone who likes this kind of thing on its own merits, right? This game in a vacuum was visually satisfying, orally satisfying, mechanically surprisingly satisfying for someone who does not consider this their genre, right? Like, I had a blast and a half playing this and more importantly, the places where they lay in the extra sprinkles of nostalgia 
don't feel like they're mocking you if you don't get the joke, right? And the the best example I can give of that is in Doom 2, the final boss is a giant demon skull and it shoots demons out of its skull and you have to fire rockets into its brain. And if you turn on no clipping, you can go inside of its brain and you can see John Romero's head on a spike. And it's supposed to be like, oh, because the mastermind behind Doom is, of course, John Romero, right? He's like one of those super famous, like he's like a rock star game dev. Like he cared that people knew who he was, right? And in this game, John Romero has long since left the company ID Software, right? But there's this one cave, and if you go into it, there's a skull on a spike, and it's wearing a football helmet that says Doom on the side. And I was like, "Nice, oh, that's cute, because if you didn't know what that was, you would just be like, huh, weird. But if you know that that's a direct reference to John Romero, who has left the company and who inserted himself into the second Doom, and it was this like big, you know, Easter egg that kids used to talk about. I remember talking to people about it, like, oh, if you turn on no clipping, you can go, right? Like, they never make you feel left out for that stuff. They they put it in in just a way that it's like, if you just want to chuckle at this, that's fine. But you have the internet go figure out why we put this in here and it, it's going to tickle you. <laughs> and and I love that kind of thing because it's so easy. They could have so easily made this game only for people in their thirties and forties who played doom and doom two, but they didn't, they targeted people in their thirties and forties, but then they said, Hey, all you 12 to 18 year olds who are, this is your first doom. We want to bring you in because we think this is just the best thing ever. Right? So we want to honor the people who came before you, but we also know that like you are new to this and we want to bring you in on the joke. Like we want you to enjoy killing demons, punch the clock, shoot some demons. So like that, the fact that they threaded that needle, I think is what for our purposes makes this no nostalgia goggles required. Like anybody who likes this kind of very specific flavor could pick this up and enjoy the ever loving hell out of this game. <laughs> Well played. Um, and, and honestly, uh, you know, cosign everything that you said. Uh, I, I think that your no nostalgia goggles required far outweighs anything that I could say about it. Right. Because I mean, you know, I mean, like I, I, I was, I mean, one is I, I spent a lot of time setting this up. So, I mean, obviously I thought it was worth playing. Right. Oh you God. Know? What if you uh, hadn't played it in a while and you were like, Oh no, it sucks. <laughs> oh no, this is terrible. I spent so much time and energy on this. Uh, but, but no, I think that, that, you know, to your point, right. Is that somebody who does not consider themselves to be a first person shooter, you know, gamer, um, to, to say like, but, but I, I enjoyed this. I mean, like that, that's kind of awesome, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that, that they threaded so many needles, uh, but I, I did genuinely enjoy, uh, generally genuinely enjoyed playing this game. I mean, I would look forward to playing it. Uh, it could be exhausting sometimes because of the amount that it demands of you, but it was always fun, you know? Um, and it, it 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 also does something that I really appreciate. So everything that you said for it holding up, but um, I really think that a, a really fun, enjoyable video game makes great stories. And this game does that, right? Like I could, we could probably do the entire after show of just us exchanging stories of fun, dumb ways that we interacted with this game, killed demons, got killed by demons, you know, um, all that kind of good stuff. So I gotta say, man, uh, the forecast for today, doom! The curtain falls, the music plays, the credits roll, then it all fades to black. And you're left by yourself, the fanfare is gone, there's no player two there by your side to share victories won. But as you slowly progress down the hall to your bed, a few great events leak back into your head from the time that you spent traversing the land, battling evil, fighting the darkness, just sword in hand, your memories creep in. 